you read the title right no one is good in and of themselves no human being no matter how fine looking you are no matter how handsome or beautiful you are none of us with our small smooth smiles <laughs> none of us is good with our smooth words and smooth talks we can flatter we can pretend we can deceive we can cheat no one is good now jesus himself literally said this that no one is good a man went to jesus and asked him good master what good thing was i do that i might gain eternal life and jesus immediately looked at him he was like why do you call me good no one is good except god now the truth is that when you want to judge something good it means beyond the action the intention and the motive should be right and in our world we have a lot of people who can do moral things who can do good things but we can't really tell if they are good at heart based on their motives and the intentions that they have it's just like somebody giving you something or giving you money you might think they are good people because they've been of help to you not knowing that they might actually have ulterior motives now i want to dwell on these that Jesus said no one is good from the biblical view so that we can get something to learn from at least it, it's going to help you and I to know how we deal with people how we support good people and how we become good people ourselves because naturally like Jesus said no one is good in Luke account of that story Luke chapter 18 the scripture says a certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. So now, this really can get somebody to be like, Why would Jesus just rebuke this man like that? Jesus already knows he's a good master, right? So why would he respond like that to this young ruler? Like, why do you call me good? No one is good except God. Now, from the context of the scripture, it could show two or more things. First of all, that Jesus is saying, you don't actually believe that I am God, but if you call me good, because God alone is good, are you saying that I am God? And also, secondly, he's only asking what good thing must I do to gain eternal life. It's about his performance, like I need to know the do's and don'ts. And God is not just about do's and don'ts. It's about you becoming a good person. Because as a human, you are not a good person naturally. Now, scriptural proof that no one is good. Jesus said, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Already, it says the premise that no one is good. Because all of us as humans had fallen away from the fall, every human being, our hearts, at the basis of it, is evil. So that is why we have the potential to do evil. And when it comes to doing evil as a human being, it could feel so natural. It is easier to do. But to do good doesn't come natural. It comes intentional. And even if you search through the scriptures, even the best of us is no good. David said of himself, for I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, in Psalms 51 verse 5. So that can tell all of us that every child that comes out do not need to be taught how to be evil, how to do wicked things, how to sin, because it comes through our DNA as a natural man or woman. So it means, innately, we are evil. And we cannot be good. As much as we can do good, tell someone good morning and help someone out and do moral things, but that does not necessarily mean that we are good because Jesus has already said it. No one is good except God. We can do nice things. We can do good things, but our good works in essence is not going to save us. Our good works won't give us eternal life. The fact that I'm helping people, the fact that I am being of help to the society, 
the fact that I am trying to be a good person through my actions does not mean that I'm going to gain eternal life through my good works. There is a man in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 who gave alms to people. His name is Cornelius, if I'm not wrong. He gave alms to people who did not believe in Jesus. He did good things, but then his good deed was not a guarantee for him to have gotten eternal life. So, God, through Jesus, had to send Peter to go preach to him. Because he did good works and he had the right heart, he needed to be saved by believing in Jesus to be transformed. Because in and of ourselves, without Christ, without the death and resurrection and the payment at the cross, we are no good. So it means every human being in the world, none, not even one is good. Yeah, in our human language, we can call people, this person is such a good person. But don't you even wonder that the person you call a good person today can actually have a different reputation tomorrow or even have a different reputation to someone else. Is it not a wonder? And you'll be like, no, that's not the person. It's not them. They did not do that. How sure are you? Can you swear for them? Oh no, you wouldn't want to try that. So because of this nature that we carry, that is why to hate someone, especially when you have a reason, can feel so clean. They hurt me. They did this to me. They caused me harm. So I don't like them. You hate them. You disdain them. It could feel so clean. To harbor unforgiveness and bitterness could feel so right. I have the right to do this. I have the right to hold them hostage. Well, are you really holding them hostage? That is why forgiving could seem like why would you tell me to forgive? Like, I need to hold these people, grab them by the neck. But this is not a topic for forgiveness. So, like, I'm talking about the good things to love does not even come natural because we are evil in nature. To do good does not even come natural. It's actually an intentional thing that you need to build. It's until the good God gets his life into you, that is only what will make you become a good man or a good woman. But apart from God, no one, not even the best of us, not even the most intellectual or the most wise amongst men is good. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Now back to Jesus' words, he said, No one is good except God. So it means that for any man to become good, that man must have an intimate relationship with God and through that intimate relationship, God's life is transfused as if it's a transfusion of blood into the man and the man's heart and life is transformed. That is why Paul Apostle could say in Galatians chapter 2, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. It is no longer I that live, it is Christ that lives in me. Because that is the guarantee for him to be a good person. And it is the same guarantee for you and I to become good people. The life we live should be the life led by God. Because only God is good. And for us to become good people, good husbands, good friends, good neighbors, good workers, good colleagues, whatever good you want to tack it, I mean really good with clear motives, with clean intentions, it takes you getting the life of God into you. I came that I may give you life and that life more abundantly. John 10, 10. So no one is good in and of themselves. No human being, no matter how fine looking you are, no matter how handsome or beautiful you are, none of us with our small, smooth smiles. <laughs> none of us is good. With our smooth words and smooth talks, we can flatter, we can pretend, we can deceive, we can cheat. So what makes people be the way they are? What makes the world be the way it is? Because no one is good. And it only takes intentional work for someone to approach God 
and says, I surrender. I know I'm not good. That was way Jesus was trying to lead the rich young ruler in that scripture. He told him no one is good except God. He was trying to point his attention. If you want to do good, first of all, seek whom that is good. Because for you to be able to do good, you need to get the life of him that is good into you. From then, you can do good. And the second thing, which is the last thing I want to say concerning this, is that being good from this viewpoint, getting the life of God, is not static. But it is dynamic. What do I mean by this? It is a life led by the Spirit of God that when we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which means as I wake up daily, someone walks up to me and says something unmeaningful to me. And I'm using the word unmeaningful. They say something offensive and the Spirit of God tells you, no, don't reply. Keep quiet. Be silent. Be still. Now that's not easy to take. So it's a dynamic work of obedience to God, which means for you to really be a good person, it's a dynamic thing. It's not a static thing. It's as you walk daily, you have to display the life of God. That is what makes you a good person. Sometimes even as a married person, your spouse is going to say things to you. I don't mean the ones that are toxic or abusive. You should not be in such a situation. I mean the one that loves you. You know they care about you. But they are going to say offensive things to you. And sometimes God will say, hold your tongue, bridle your tongue. You don't need to reply to that. Reply in love because soft answer will turn away wrath. And that is how to be good. When God's life in God's word become your beating. I hope this video is meaningful and helpful to you. I am Uwem Akwan. This is my YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. Share this video to someone that they would see and be blessed also. Thank you and God bless you. See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.